Hey everybody and welcome back to part four of my QHY 268M adventure. And today is the exciting one. We're going to be looking at some of the first light that I've actually managed to collect. But I thought it was just worth doing a very, very quick recap on what we've done so far. So obviously, as we were doing, we have currently connected everything together. So we have connected the camera to the filter wheel via the QHY ecosystem, where unlike ZWO, where it screws together, this is all bolted together. Um, I have found already that does have some distinct advantages. You don't get any movement between the pieces. Um, it does also have some disadvantages, as I've already found out, uh, which I'm gonna come on to a little later where I had an issue with dirt on the sensors. Um, and so I had to take the whole thing to pieces again and clean everything out. And so of course that made that a whole lot more difficult as well. But I thought it was just worth covering where I've got to now. So I said I have the camera attached to the filter wheel, which is attached to the spacers, which is attached to my field flattener here on my Explore Scientific ED102. Um, I'm then focused with that. From a cable point of view, uh, I have three cables. I have the, this, this great cable here that I think is brilliant that just simply goes from the filter wheel into the back of the camera. That provides both its power and what would traditionally be its USB capabilities, which I think is excellent. I've got the power cable in there and I have got the USB cables which travels up and goes into my very exciting and new Pegasus Astro power box. So that's a recent addition to my, my kit and I think it is fantastic. My cable management point of view, uh, which I haven't tried very hard with here, um, but all I, all I have is a couple of cables now that come off of my uh, actual telescope setup. One for the power for the telescope, the other one for USB. That, that is the only cable that leaves my setup. So I think that's really, really improved the overall cable management in my setup and cable management is something I've always been dreadful at. So I'm pleased for anything that makes it better. So do recommend that as a great bit of kit. But this is now everything that we've got actually fitted to the camera and ready to go. Now I have to say, I had some driver issues to start with. Um, now for some reason, I don't think the driver's downloaded properly. So I spent a number of nights trying to capture images where things just weren't quite coming through right. They weren't looking as good as I had expected. Uh, I had some issues connecting to the filter wheels in Nina as well. So I, I you know, it just it, little things kept going wrong uh, and I found it it's very quite frustrating first start to things. However, in the end, I decided to just do what everybody does, which is the, uh, the driver equivalent of turning it off and on again. I uh, deleted and then reinstalled the drivers for it. And I have to say, since then, I have had much better success. So if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen my recent Iris Nebula image, which was just a few test shots is all I did with that. There's not a huge amount of data, and that was done in RGB. Um, wasn't overly impressed with it, but you know, hey, it is true first light in that sense, I suppose. Um, but since I've actually fixed the driver issue, I've been looking at NGC7822, which again is quite low down. I'm intentionally doing a, a target that's gonna push this camera to its limits. So what I want to do today is kind of share where I've got to with that. I'm also gonna share the dark frames. Again, the claims have no amp glow on this, so we'll see whether that stacks up. I'm also gonna look at a flat frame as well. So when I talk about dirt, uh, you'll see what I mean in a short while when I actually start having a look at what happened in my flat frames. So all that aside, uh, let's have a quick look what's been going on when we look at the frames. So my name's Matt and this is Everyday Astro. So first up, let's have a look at those claims of zero amp glow, because this is the bit I'm really excited about with this camera. It's the ability to potentially not have to take dark frames, which to me sounds like a dream. I hate calibration of frames at the best of times. I hate anything that makes this, this hobby boring. So the, the, the thought of losing the most difficult of all the um, calibration frames really kind of excites me. And it seems that it's pretty much true. So this is, this is a single dark frame. This is not a master dark. So this is just a single frame. And as you can see, that that is the cleanest dark frame I think I've ever seen in my life. So I am genuinely really pleased about that. I just note the time here, this is, this is a four minute dark frame. I mean, it, it, and there is clearly no amp glow. I am used to a, a significant amount of amp glow with my ZWO 
uh, up in this top right hand corner and yet there is nothing here. I mean I don't know how well this will come up with with YouTube's way of uh, compressing the quality of videos but there is clearly uh. some banding going across here um, but I'm pretty sure that will either as a, it says a master dark take that out um, or with enough dithering then that would also sort that out as well. So I, I am pretty confident that I don't need to take darks. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give this a try. I'm going to do an experiment with it. So uh, as part of the, the image I'm working on at the moment, I'm going to, to do it with darks and without darks. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to see if there's any difference. Because if, if dithering or quite heavy dithering takes away 90% of the problem, then I'm not particularly bothered about the last 10%. You know, it's, it's very little gain. It's a law of diminishing return at that point. So there is every potential here. I, I could do away with dark frames, but I'll do that in a future video where we get the first full image out of this, um, and we'll have a look and see what that looks like. The other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, which was the disappointing part, uh, is dirt. So this is my flat frame. If I just expand that, I'm hoping again you can see the amount of awfulness that was on this image uh, and if, in fact with this iris, it just did the iris image i did it did not can even calibrate out i mean it was it was that bad um, it, it, it's the worst i've seen and I, I spent a short age cleaning my primary lens cleaning my uh, feel flat nerf it must be somewhere in my image train that is causing this because well this is a brand new camera with brand new filters so when that didn't work and the pattern remained exactly the same, uh, I then experimented by taking flat frames with four different filters, and yet this dirt pattern remained exactly the same, meaning there was only one place left, which was on the sensor of a brand new camera. Uh, and so I duly unbolted everything, took the entire thing to pieces until I could actually access the sensor on the camera. And sure enough, it was, it was pretty filthy, actually. It's, um, I cleaned that. And now my flat frames, if you took this off, I'd also now already cleaned the field flattener and my primary lens. My, my flat frames did not have a single mark on it. So it has definitely solved the problem, but a little bit disappointing that something new comes with so much dirt on a sensor and also a lesson learned for me in the future where I will be making sure that uh, these things are clean before I put them together. So the, the moment we've been waiting for, uh, so this is going to be an image, it's a single image, and it's uncalibrated of NGC 7822. It is as low as it ever gets in the sky at the moment uh, during the night. So again, it's pushing it, it's at about 30 degrees, which sits pretty much in London's light pollution, sort of towards my horizon. Uh, London is a little bit more off to the east, but it, you know it still is affected by that. So you know, this was really, really pushing it. I also mistimed, mistyped my times into Nina as well. So I meant to do a 480 second exposure. I ended up doing an 840 second exposure as a 14 minute exposure on, in hydrogen alpha. And this is uh, the result and I am very happy with it. Uh, I mean, it is such a clean, considering that it's had no calibration frames at all applied to it. There is 14 minutes of that sensor going, as you can see the time down here, uh, that it took, taken at minus 15. Uh, that's with a gain at 56. And the offset I've got set to zero. I don't know why I mistook that. That should be set to about 20 or 25 uh, from what I've read on this camera. So I will try this again at that point. But again, the, again I don't know if YouTube will compress it up, but the amount of, of nebulosity I can actually see in the edges of this is is amazing. You'd also expect that kind of at 14 minutes, but I did not expect kind of the level of detail that I've got and how clean the image is as well. So I, I think this is a really, really positive start. Um, I'm in the process of building up uh, the narrowband image for this. So at the moment, uh, I have a couple of hours worth of data on S2. Uh, due to some issues that I've had, like Windows decided to restart itself at one o'clock in the morning, uh, I only have about half an hour of HA data and I haven't yet got any O3 data. So I'm going to need a couple more clear nights, which isn't looking likely in the next week. Uh, hopefully that'll give me the chance to get the rest of the data I need. And then in the uh, in the next video, I can share a final image with the, I'll show a calibrated frame for each 
channel looks like um, and we'll also be able to reveal my my first ever narrowband image so I am tremendously excited about that. So that's everything I wanted to share in this video. Uh, I hope you have found it useful so far. Uh, so we, we've moved through the, the logical steps, we've put everything together, we've connected it, we've got the filters in, we've now got that first light. So next up is going to be getting that first real image. So the Iris Nebula was definitely not right. Whatever was wrong with the drivers, I, I'm not quite sure, but that wasn't right. And even that had some real good detail to it. For the really limited amount of time I spent taking any images on that, it was only ever a test. And again, it's a faint object at the best of times with a lot of sort of dark blobbiness around it. So I didn't expect miracles from that. Again, very, very low to the horizon, but you know, it, it's showing some real promise. And this, this HA image that I've taken, I think that shows just how good the promise is. So really looking forward to sharing the next image with you. But until then, clear skies.